Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a net throw into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put it, what is good, into buckets. What is bad, they throw it away. This will be at the end of the ages. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fire furnace. There, where there will be willing and grinded of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answer, yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. When Jesus finished his parables, he went away from there. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the liturgical memory of St. Martha, a woman who loved Jesus, as did her sister Mary and her brother Lazarus, a woman who had a very high concept of the Lord, also very high concept of being a homemaker. Jesus had come to her house and he wasn't alone, at least his apostles were there and possibly also some of the women who accompanied him. And that for a homemaker was a lot. Suddenly finding yourself with 20 guests was a first-rate domestic problem, especially if the main guest was someone who you love and that you already adore the Messiah. That made Martha very nervous. It seems normal to me. I'm not saying that, I, that it's right, but it seems normal to me. She became nervous because the Lord was teaching and Mary was listening and Martha was walking from one place to another without being able to keep it up with everything. It was a farm they had on the hill, on the side of the hill of Jerusalem, in the Garden of Olive. On the other side is Bethany. They had a farm. They had turbans, no doubt, but she couldn't keep it up. And the Lord interrupted her and said, Hey, I need help. My sister is there. Why she doesn't help me? And that's fine. Let her listen. But... Hey, I'm very overwhelmed. I can't take it anymore. A very typical reaction of many homemakers. Nervous. They have to do everything. They have to do everything good. And they get nervous. Well, the surprising thing is the Jesus answer. Because he could have said, Yeah, you're right. Like We were a lot of people here. And we have to prepare the rooms, organize the food. And it's not like today that you can just call somebody and they give you the food already made. Jesus could have said, you're right, you're right. Go go on, Mary, please. You will listen to me another time. Go and help your sister. But Christ wanted to teach us a lesson to her, to Mary, to Lazarus, to those who were with him and to us. And the answer he gave Martha must have surprised her. And I don't know if she like it. Martha, Martha, you're worried and nervous about so many things, but only one is necessary. Mary has chosen the best part, and it will be it will not be taken away from her. Does that mean that we should not do things? That we should not do works of charity? That we should not be restless and nervous about so many things? Does that mean that we have to dedicate ourselves to contemplation before be, be in the tabernacle and don't work, don't wash the clothes and don't prepare the food? Evidently not. He means that there must be time for both things, for prayer and for action. But uh, this time for the two things also requires a time where one is giving priority, and then the other. The one who understand this very well was 
a very few centuries later, St. Benedict. St. Benedict is the true father of Europe. He is one of the patrons of Europe, but he is the true father, at least of Western Europe. With a sucking and devastated world, with a Roman civilization in ruins, St. Benedict begins to build, rebuild Europe with a motto, pray and work, ora e labora. This is Western Europe, and this is the West, pray and work. An European, a Western European, a Westerner, also those who have influenced by the Western Europe, European culture, by the Christian culture of that time, knows that he has to work. For us, work is fundamental. It is very important. St. Paul has said in this letter to the Thessalonians, He who does not work, let him not eat. He who does not work, let him not eat. We have to work. But St. Benedict understands it very well. Pray. Pray. Pray and work. Ora e labora. Pray and work. Because this is what the Lord told St. Martha. That there must be time for everything. But now I am speaking. Now this is time to pray. Now this is the time to listen to me. So that you are going to give me the lunch a half an hour later. Okay. That the house will not be clean, wonderful, perfect, tidy. Okay. But now is the time to pray. There must be time for everything. And now is the time to pray. And that's what the Lord said to St. Martha. So be still. Sit down here and listen like your sister is doing. And then later we all can go and help with the house chores. Our culture, in our Western culture, I repeat, very marked by the European culture in that Christian area. In our culture, man is no longer defined by what he is but by what he does. Some philosophers say that mother, mother man is a homo father, a man who makes. And when most present themselves, they present themselves through what they, they do. I am an architect. I am a lawyer. I am a doctor. I am a civil servant. I am a housewife. I am a farmer. I am a priest. I am. You are what you do, and this is a very serious mistake. I cannot be what I do. Of course, that what I do makes me with some personality. That's true. But at the end, yes, your work conditions you, marks you, not only in terms of schedule, but also in terms of way of personality. But you are so much more than what you do. And that's why the crisis is so big when the people that work outside of home retires. Because what gave meaning to their life, you are, it's over. You are a pensioner who has nothing to do and therefore you are nobody. Because your being was related to your doing. And if you didn't do, you were nothing. You are a retiree. You are no one anymore. A huge mistake. St. Francis of Assis used to say, man is, and he knew why he used this word, man is, what he is before God, and no more. You are not a doctor, or you are not a priest, or you are not a homemaker. You are what you are before God. You are a child of God, loved by God. You might be, if you want to be, united to God. You are a person who walks towards holiness. That is what you are. Where are you? I'm a Catholic. I'm a child of God. And I want to be a saint. That's what I am. And then what do you do? Well, on this path here on earth, I am a doctor, I'm an engineer, I'm a politician, I am a priest, but I am, I am a son of God. My being is to be a child of God. My being, it was one to love God. This is what I am. And it doesn't have to be to do nothing with the age. I will be retired 
I will no longer work, and I will still be a shell of God, whereas my being is so subordinate to my doing that when I can no longer do, I cease to be. I become a kind of zombie, a living dead, to who all evils and illnesses suddenly come upon him, because his life has ceased to have meaning. My life cannot have meaning just because I am a doctor, a lawyer, engineer, or a bricklayer. My life has meaning because God exists, God loves me, and I want to love that God who loves me. What are you? A person who is loved by God and who wants to love Him. And what do you do? Well, I do what I can. Because sometimes you have studied something and you don't, you can't find a job of your kind. But I know what I am. I am a shell of God, loved by God. Let us not forget this old teaching of St. Benedict. It gives us a lot of peace and a lot of balance, even psychological. Ora e labora. Pray and work. And let us remember the Lord's word to St. Martha. You're worried and nervous about so many things, and only one thing is necessary. You will be a little calmer, more more calm, and everything will go better around you if you pray a little bit more. Amen.